Hey guys, it's Electron Man. I just wanted to kind of uh, preempt this video. It's a kind of a long one. Basically, the story is I got a 2006 Tundra, and it kind of started getting this weird vibration. Um, I, at first, it seemed like it kind of came and went, and then uh, it got towards like 45 to 60. It just had a weird vibration. Then I started noticing a clunk. So anyway, the first part of this video is basically I, uh, I lifted up the back end with the jack, and I put the camera underneath it. And kind of just uh, used it as a you know a sniffing tool to go front to back and just kind of video it all. And then I sat down in the video and looked at it and realized that uh, it sounded like it was something to drive shaft. So then I got underneath it and well the rest of the story is with this video. So anyway, I hope they enjoy it. Toyota noise. Let's see if we figure it out from that. Okay, guys, I sure found the problem. I don't know if you can see that or not, but look at all that movement in that U joint. I got some in the front one too. Uh, she definitely needs U joints. Well, with the magic of uh. Hollywood here. Uh, I'll be back whenever I get some U-joints and figure this out. Okay guys, I'm back and uh, as you can see I kind of went overboard here. I actually uh, I purchased a whole brand new drive shaft. I got to looking and this Toyota Tundra has uh, like 226,000 miles on it and uh, that back one's really bad. I got a front one that's loose and really all four of them need to be replaced and the carrier bearing which is this guy right here it's got a little slop in it too so I got to pricing it out and uh, a good U-joint's about 30 bucks a piece so I got $120 in U-joints and that carrier bearing's almost 100 so I've got like 230 or $40 worth of uh, U-joints and a carrier bearing well I got to looking around out on eBay and I was able to purchase a brand new drive shaft I don't have to worry about pressing U-joints in and out or nothing and uh, it's got all brand new U-joints and a brand new carrier bearing. It's a brand new dry shaft. So we're going to go that direction. So anyway, um, as you can see, I've got underneath the car. We're going to go ahead and start pulling this sucker out. And thought I'd bring you along on it. Um, it really doesn't look like it's too bad of a job. You've got a, you've got this carrier bearing here, which has got two bolts here. It just it's a slip yoke. It just slips into the front of the transmission up front there. And it looks like it's got four bolts back here so uh i've already got it lifted up let's go ahead and start doing some unbolting here see what we end up with i don't know how i'm gonna do this camera i guess i'll just lay on the back there for that what i do for videos i'll tell you 
Anyway, it looks like it's a 14 millimeter. We're gonna go ahead and get started on it. Other than the fact that I got a swivel and extension and a 14 inch wrench, but I got no socket. So I gotta get out and go get a socket. I'll be back. I'll be back. Yeah. Okay, let's start with the back here. Got me a 14. I'm gonna put it on a swivel. I think that's gonna be the best way to do it. I don't know if I need that long of an extension or not. And uh, yeah, it's on the bottom here. I've got it uh, on ramps and a jack. I don't really like being on this building. It's not my favorite place to be. So I'm trying to be as safe as I can with this. Yeah, let's see here. I've also got the front wheels blocked in the emergency brake on, so God hope that'll keep us safe. I'm gonna go for a shorter extension actually. This has turned into a lot of fun. I guess we're gonna do a review on the earthquake uh impact wrench as well um my little old craftsman three eighths cordless impact drive it wouldn't touch it not would not touch that thing i've tried a breaker bar i couldn't get it with that i tried my big harbor freight cordless it's so big i can barely get in it so i ended up back over at harbor freight and i bought me this earthquake um it's supposed to have 800 foot pounds hopefully this guy will break them loose because i tell you what if you're going to do a differential replacement on a toyota tundra be prepared them bolts back here are tight anyway so far i really like the earthquake as far as i i uh, got out of the package and uh comes a little bag but i love the uh forward and backwards adjustment it's real uh easy to use a lot of these i got the stupid dog knob that you turn and you push in and you never know where it's really at so so far i really like that but let's really put it to the test now and see if uh if i can get these bolts off if this don't get them off i don't know what i'm gonna do i guess i'm gonna take it somewhere because i'm I'm running out of options. This will be the third impact inch I tried to use on it. These bolts are tight. And I even put some penetrating oil on them too, but well, let's go ahead and give it a try with the uh, with the earthquake, see what the earthquake will do on these, these suckers. Oh, come on, baby. I need you to come loose. You're wearing me out on this. Look at that. Wow. Yeah. Just, I was just using the wrong tool. That old Craftsman cordless does pretty good. That 3 inch drive on some stuff, but it wasn't going to touch these things. Man, this thing's taking them off like they're not even tight. Crazy, crazy, crazy. So anyway, back to doing a rear end differential, as you can see. We just need to drop these four bolts here on the back. And when we get them, we'll move over to, to the other part. Okay, now that I got the four back ones off, now I'm just gonna loosen these carrier bearings. Strap here. I'm not gonna completely take it off, I'm just gonna loosen it. Okay, now she's loosened. Now with any luck, I should be able to shove this. And I'm going to have to get a hammer and a pry bar. To... But basically, my next thing I need to do is I need to pry this loose. It should be pretty easy. Just tap with a hammer here. Get the slide forward enough to... Uh, Drop it out of here. I might have to drop that center one down all the way. I don't know, it's got lots of slot left. Well, we need to get it broke loose. It doesn't have a whole lot either there. Looking at the new one, it's just got one little lip right there. So, hopefully I'm not making you do this. Anyway, I'm gonna get up from underneath here and take a break. This is 
turn into more than I thought. I thought it'd be like a 30 minute job at six bolts, but I'm telling you, these guys were tight, tight. Those weren't bad. But anyway, next thing to do is pop this loose, drop it down, drop the center ones down, and it should just slide out of that front yoke, and then it should just be a matter of sliding the new shaft in, putting these two bolts in and going backwards the way I took it apart. But this 2600, look underneath here, guys. This is what living in the south is nice about. I mean, there's not a single bit of rust underneath here. And look at this. The guys up north would be jealous. I mean, what is this? 2006, so it's what? 17. What would be 7? Golly, let's see. Uh, 10 years would be 2016 plus. When, yep, so 17 years. 17 years old. And, I mean, look at this. And it's not oil treated or anything. This is just. It's not even undercoated. This is just. I mean, amazing. There's just not any, none. I don't see any rust underneath here. Amazing. Anyway, guys, I'll be back. <laughs> okay, guys, back at it. We need to get back the pride off here first. Let me get some light going here. And hopefully this doesn't give me too hard of a time. Now that thing about took my head off. But anyway, it just slides away. It drops, but it dropped. I got lucky. It dropped not on top of me. <laughs> anyway, there's the there's the back. That rear end feels good. Just gonna drop these two center carrier bearings now. Our two uh, center carrier bolts. okay I just need to be careful when I'm sliding a new one in to not damage that seal we'll slide that front in and then we'll uh, reassemble the way we took it apart go ahead and set the camera down again sorry guys I try to get the best view I can here but kind of tricky and I'm dealing with a heavy ass drive shaft laying on my back so Gotta just have to work with me here. Back up. Get it started in there. Well, that was easy. Now to get one of these bolts started okay what I'm doing now I'm just putting these two bolts back in here just loosely and now what I need to do I tell you what, it'd be a lot easier to do this with a lift. But I ain't got no lift. 
Let's see if I can get a, one bolt here and get her started or a couple of them. Just like so. <clears throat> this is not going to fall on me now, right? <clears throat> oh, well, we got to do is put the four bolts back on here <clears throat> and uh, tighten these center bearings and get a pretty good old shape, right? <clears throat> That's the damn mess I made because I made a mess. Little catty corner here. I don't know what the torque spec on this is. Guess I could look it up. I got an old long. Manual type torque ratio. Probably a pain in the ass right here. Honestly, just get them as tight as I can get it. Okay. Well, she sure fits. Well, that's lovely. Apparently the new drive shaft is closer to the bolts than the other one. So I'm going to have to use a thin socket. The wall's too thick on this. Go old school. And that, folks, is one done drive shaft. We'll go take her for a little drive now. See how she behaves. I've got a feeling it's going to sound a lot better than it did. That was fun, wasn't it? Okay. Now time to see if uh, the drive shaft fixed my clunking and vibration. This is Let's put her in gear and see how she sounds. No more crunching and cracking. That's a good sign. Let's take her for a little road trip here. See how she does.
until it started noticing this weird vibration about 45 miles an hour. And then I it do like 45 to about 60, 65, and then it smoothed out. Then it got to where it would smooth out a little, but it would still have a vibration and no matter what speed I went, but it got really bad about 40 to 60. I mean, it just, you could feel it underneath your seat would be the best way I could describe it. It's like this weird vibration. First, I thought it was a tire, but you could tell. And then I thought maybe it was something with the transmission and I got all, I got all worried. But uh, anyway, as you saw uh, what I did to kind of diagnose it. And then of course, once I really got underneath there and got to looking at it close, man, it was obvious. I actually had two of them, one of them really bad, one right back there by the rear differential yoke was uh, the worst one. Then I had one up by the carrier bearing that was, had some play in it. Get her out here on the highway and get her up to speed and see, see if everything is copacetic on it. The replacement one actually seemed like uh, the yoke was a little beefier than the actual factory one, which surprises me. Or at least the casting was, but that was a bargain. carrier bearing being pretty sloppy too it kind of convinced me the best way to go was to uh, just go ahead and place the whole thing well make up your mind mister I'm trying to let you get in here I'm trying to be a nice guy go on Well, we know one thing on Toyota's, the U-joints, they're good for about 220,000 miles, apparently. Something's pretty peppy, too, to be honest. hopefully you enjoyed that uh, little dry shaft repair like I said if you ever get a weird vibration and some clunking going on look for your u-joints It definitely fixed it and really wasn't that bad of a job if uh, if you had a lift it wouldn't be a 30 minute job but laying on the floor like I was and everything and not doing it the first time it was a little <laughs> half day job turned out the time I had to go to Harbor Freight and get an ink pack trench and everything but uh, sure smoothed her on out she's running like a like a top again and uh i mean all in all it still was what well, even with me buying an impact wrench and everything was under 400 bucks and i get to keep the impact wrench i'll provide a link too for where on ebay motors i bought this drive shaft that was the biggest bargain that uh that was that was awesome but uh, anyway you guys have a great day this is electron man if you haven't already please subscribe to my channel give me a thumbs up and if you got any questions 
feel free to ask. And as always, have a great day. This is Electron Man.